Whew. Good morning. Oh, how are y'all this morning? <clears throat> I am uh I'm present and accounted for. <laughs> Bud Light commercial this early in the morning, huh? Boost Mobile featuring Pitbull. I didn't know Boost Mobile was still a thing. Good morning. Teeth are all good. Nice shiny whites, I guess. They're pretty much coffee stained wrecks, but uh healthy, healthy enough. So no cavities. <clears throat> uh Hey, hey, good morning, good morning. Teeth was a concern? No, just regular, uh, every six months, dental cleaning. So, the regular sick. Shravel and you're sick with a cold. My wife is just kind of getting over the flu. Uh, she's had a fever for the past two, three days. She worked two of them, like the ding-dong that she is. Um, and then has been in bed for like the past day and a half. So, she's starting to feel better. So, hopefully you feel better too. <clears throat> Do I still have all my teeth? I have a implant on one and a crown on another. So I don't know if that was a trolley joke or not. It was kind of funny. I'm in the South, so there's a there's a thing you might you might, you might not have all your teeth in the South. Um, so yeah, I had one crack, so I had to get the full thing out and have a full implant in, like all the hardware and stuff in there. That was a fun experience if you've ever had an implant. Um, it's about a year long process to get that all done. It was uh, annoying. My teeth don't look southern. I've never had braces either, so that's what trips out all my family and my dental hygienist and the dentist that I've never had braces and have just dead straight teeth. So you win some, you lose some. I'm blind. Ooh, couch bound, Jackie. I'm sorry. I hope it's uh, hopefully you're gonna heal up well, and we can make you uh, laugh and giggle through your through your medication today. Um, because I don't know what we're talking about. Like I'm coming in here just hot on two wheels getting in here. I got, I brought some things, I brought some, uh, envelopes to address. I brought some pens and paper to talk about, but man, I like, I don't know what's going on today. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a, uh, it's been a week so far just in yesterday. What's on the show tomorrow. I'm glad you mentioned that, Andrew. I'm going to do a deep dive on my desk like what I'm currently using for the desk. Oh, I know you weren't trolling, but yes, uh, all my teeth are still present and accounted for. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a desk deep dive. Um, good morning, Evan. Um, I'm going to do a desk deep dive to so I can talk about a bunch of products tomorrow. And then we will do, um, I want to talk about a little bit about digital writing because there's been a couple of things pop up in my feeds recently on the digital thing. No goose game today. I have a, I have a, uh, uh, is proposition the correct term for y'all? I don't know. So, um, my kids are off all week next week. We're definitely streaming Tuesday next week. We're definitely not streaming Thursday because it's Thanksgiving here in the U S. So if I'll do a second stream or not, but I'm going to have my kids all week next week. I think my wife's working most of the week. Um, I'm going to bring them over and we'll do Tyler and Elizabeth play the untitled goose game. How does that sound? So we will do that next week. Um, that should be fun. Um, I won't get to it today. We'll see how Thursday, uh, can be, um, for me playing the goose game. State of the closet of doom as an addendum to the state of the desk. Yeah. Like, uh, along those lines. But really, the state of the desk, why I want to talk about that is because I've just been really using some very cool stuff. And it's stuff you know about, stuff I've already told you about. It's the stuff that sticks that I continue to use. That's the one. That's what I'm going to focus on tomorrow, the things that live on my desk. Like, look, you can tell I'm turning into a purple guy. Like, despite what the colors say on your monitors, these are not blue. These are all purple cases. Like, we're going to talk about this. Like, I don't have any orange cases in use right now. So all, I ha everything I have in use is purple. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about... Um, so we're going to talk about that. Um, the digital writing thing. We'll, of course, mention the new field notes. There won't be much to talk about with those. Um, but we ha we are contractually obligated to do that. Um, not really, but it's just it makes people mad. So I'm happy to do that every now and then. Um, there won't much be much to say about that edition, so we'll save that my uh, my notes for tomorrow. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm at a point. Uh, the Ravens are looking good this year. How about that Lamar Jackson? Who knew? 
I'm at a point where I'm really content with a lot of the things that I use. I canceled my color subscription, but I still have like two deliveries left. Or no, I, you can't cancel it ahead. So it just I just won't renew it when it comes up for renewal. It's not automatically renewed. So, um, which one did I cancel? I canceled the Blackwing one because that one is auto-renewed. I canceled that one. The Field Notes one's not auto-renewed and I'm not going to renew it, but I'm still... I might be three full editions out or maybe two now that this one shipped. So I won't continue it after I won't re up after, um, when it comes up, I think in the spring. So had a nice little chat about a student about stationary using zebra sarasas. Oh, nice. When, uh, when you find that little, uh, that little secret little jet pins, uh, um, topic that you can talk about, um, especially with a student, you know, with, uh, you know, that's just kind of a cool moment, cool moment to have. Jesse says purple and orange go together very well. They do. And I'm very hesitant to do that around here because that is the color of the Clemson tigers. Um, and people don't take too fondly to that around here. I like, I can't, I can't do purple and orange and blue and orange very much just based on like college nonsense like things that don't matter whatsoever it's just a mentality thing so <clears throat> Whew. good morning chat <laughs> my piano player just picked up a lami studio so please she found my instagram feed uh, orange and green i i'm down with orange and green um i love the lami studio i should review the aquamarine even though I've reviewed the studio before and you can't get the aquamarine anymore, but I carry that pen all the time. Like that is in my case today. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I love, I think the studio is just such a good, good pen, super underrated. It'll probably be in the gift guide next week. We're recording the gift guide episode a week from tomorrow. So if you have any more gift guide stuff, I've started to make some, Purple and yellow is kind of my favorite. Um, growing up, my, both of my parents are LSU alums, so I grew up with the purple and gold. So <clears throat> I'll always leave that. So this one's purple and purple and turquoise, though. It's pretty hot. <clears throat> Mommy Studio British Racing Green. <laughs> I think Aquamarine is the best-looking studio ever. I'm not going to disagree. I thought it might be the British Racing Green. But that's not a me color. That's a classic Lamy color, which I appreciate. My color is the aquamarine, and I had to have that one. Totally. Uh, my other one is steel gray charcoal -y? Question mark. I'll have to look. I don't know which color my other, other one is. I do have a uh, – I did get one with a gold nib. And had Sean Newton make that into like an extra fine needle point. That I really like that nib. I should move that nib around to like this pen. But I was trying to hold out until I reviewed that because I wanted to review the stock version of it. It to that's what I have in it, Evan. It's great, except turquoise, not Pacific. But you know the you know the drill. So yeah, I have. Um, the all black one that they just released is pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that one for a members giveaway this month. We're in November. God, it's like November. It's November 19th. I don't even know. I feel like we're still in October. Good morning, Thunder Viking. <clears throat> so yeah, this is today's show. This is what we're doing. We're just gonna rant. Whatever y'all want to ramble about. Um, I started making my own gift guide notes. Where is? I'm trying to do as many small off topic gift guide things. We'll have the basics covered, you know, your basic notebooks and basic pens and price points, but I want to do some very specific stuff. Uh, is my gold spot guide up? Yes, it's in my YouTube channel. So I'm going to put a link together on the pen addict with that video linked up this week because I think they published it. Friday and link to everyone else who did the gift guide for that. 
I haven't watched them all. I watched Pinboy Roy's. It was pretty funny. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Um, oh, I have the full list in my email, Andrew. So when I do my post, I might actually do that for this afternoon. Um, but I have the full list in my email. Tom sent all of us the list of everybody's videos. So I'll, I'll embed my video in the post and then I'll link to the full batch of the other ones. I wonder if they were going to put them up on their channel too. Do I guess they have a YouTube channel. I I'm so I'm YouTube. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really like in depth on the YouTubes. Like, I don't even know if gold spot has a channel. I assume they do. And they have the original copy of my video, like the full, the full size copy of my video if they wanted to use it. So I don't know if they're going to repost it. What they were going to do was edit a bunch of answers together for one master video. But everyone's individual, YouTube noob, yeah. Everyone's individual videos were posted on their own channels. Okay, I'll post that today. That's a good reminder. Um, because I now that I was waiting for them to release their newsletter, which I don't even get, so I don't. I'm assuming it went out Friday, but um, I'll make a note that this afternoon's post on the Pen Addict will be my video, and then I think there's about six other ones in the list. There's actually people I have never heard of in my life <laughs> on this list, <laughs> so I'm like. Maybe I should check them out too. I should really, I mean, it's easy enough to do and I've never done it. It's just, I do everything through RSS for all the articles I read. I just need to pull in the RSS feed of all the pin people from YouTube into like an RSS feed. So I see them happening and like can talk about them because I think it's cool. All right. Uh, All right. <clears throat> yeah, I think you can RSS feed an individual channel. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've seen that on there. So if you go to the channel description, um, click uh, an RSS. Let me pull up my channel real quick. It's very bright in here today, so I'm going to pull this up, and it's going to make me even brighter. Let's see. Although uh, I'm logged in as myself, here's my channel. But since I'm logged in, like as the admin of my channel, maybe I, let me just go to someone else's channel. Let me go to Figboot. Figboot, I think, posted Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he was posted Lord of the Rings. So subscribed. Maybe there's maybe I'm delusional, but I thought there was a way. To update this. All right. Well, it's not super clear, is it? So I'll work on that. There's got to be a way. And even if there's not a way, there's ways that Google will allow you um, to just build your own RSS feed. <clears throat> you know, like my my shirt. <laughs> So there's like a panel here. I guess that's for when I go hunting. Is that where the the my the butt of my rifle goes? I don't I don't know what it's for. You know, all me and all my hunting. Um because it's like a this patch thing right here. I don't know why. Patch here, pocket here. Everything's in a different direction. Yeah, so you can you can make an RSS feed out of anything. So even if I um, even if I can't find how to do that natively through YouTube, you can build something pretty quickly. I could probably just do like an IFTTT thing. Say when a new channel, um, when a new video publishes in this channel, add it to my RSS queue. Something like that. It it it's got to be simple. It's got to be simple. Does it come from grid? My shirt? Does my shirt come in grid? My shirt's gridded. I don't think it comes in dot gridded. I use IFTTT to manage 
my links that I use for ink links. So if I have an RSS feed and I star the item, I, my um, backend RSS platform is called Feedbin. So if I star an article in Feedbin, it sends it to another um, website called Pinboard, which saves the links and gives me the opportunity to find them easier than in my starred feed bin feed. And then I can just get the links out of there. So IFTTT makes that happen and it ends up being easier for me. Just got to work, what'd you miss? Uh, nothing. You missed the show about nothing. Oh, my, I have clean teeth. I went to the dentist, good checkup. And I'm gonna post my gold spot review. That's a very thorough and accurate detailed summary of what has taken place in the first 19 minutes and three seconds of this stream mm. <laughs> oh pharmacy pharmacy is never good these days i say that because i live with a pharmacist and it is not good Whew. my shirt does not come in dot grid i'll work on that though um present and correct made a, a grid a grid bag I thought that was funny. It's very cute. It's like a little tote, little canvas tote bag. So yeah, I really have nothing to talk about today. I mean, I have everything to talk about, but no plans to talk about anything today. Um, where I was going when I opened my notebook, not just to write down the pin attic gold spot video, but the gift guide prep. So if there's any weird stuff for gift guide stuff that you want to know, let me know. Um, either here, Twitter, email, whatever. <clears throat> um, you know, I want to tackle some of that. Give us your wife's rant about the state of pharmacy. We do not have enough time in the day. But it's like, take, I'll give you the short version. Take just the general idea of healthcare out of it. But when you work for a large corporation these days, it's about doing more with less. And the problem with the pharmacy is they just keep take, take, taking from them and want them to do more. Um, and they're losing focus of the idea of we should probably not kill our patients first. That seems to be non-important anymore in the general sense of things, right? Everything else is more important. Um, than, than taking care of your patients. So that's the short version. So you can extrapolate from there. Um, Cause she works for a large corporation, you know, Kroger, the Kroger is a huge grocery chain. So do, do more with less. And, um, but by the way, we're here. So we make sure our patients don't die. Eh, that part's a little overrated. So that's my two cents. That's what I get from it. Pen paper storage gift guide. That's one of the things I want is storage. So storage is going to be on my list. So we will definitely have that. Let me just write that down so I don't forget. But that is absolutely on my personal list. That's actually probably the top of my list. So yes, that's at the top. So, and that's a, not a normal thing we discuss. I mean, we've certainly talked about, excuse me, storage over the years, just in general. I don't know that we've ever covered it on a gift guide. Yeah, they, um, yeah, it's tough. To, pharmacy's a tough business right now. Um, none of the current pharmacists would ever recommend anyone to get into pharmacy as it's currently constituted these days. So, yeah, and this is before we even get into the, the healthcare aspects of it, like was uh, Evan's thing. Um, it's a while. It's probably another 15 years. She's been doing it 15, 17 years. So she's been with the same company the whole time. What's funny is like they were just doing one of the challenges with my pen show schedule is my wife has to plan her, pick her vacation for next year now. Like she just did it on Sunday. They do a draft, like a draft a seniority draft everyone gets on the phone and there is a draft of weeks and it's based on seniority 
And with her being there, I forget if it's 15 or 17 years. I think it's 17. Um, she's like middle of the pack seniority. And the youngest, like, there's no one there who's been there for less than, I think the the least tenured person was five and a half or six years. The system is bonkers. <clears throat> So, like, I now know my wife's vacation schedule for next year. Um, it's just asinine. And, like, she got, like, two – like, she gets five weeks off because she's been there for so long. Um, <clears throat> but, like, we try to coordinate it around the weeks that we want. But we got to do, like, the kid stuff first. So, you know, I think two weeks were one she wanted and then the rest of the three were just what she could get. So that definitely, uh, I mean, I'm planning to go into Philly regardless. I'll go ahead and burn up a, uh, let's call the grandparents in, <clears throat> um, weekend that weekend, since I've already booked it and everything, I'll, uh, I'll make sure everyone knows over Thanksgiving that, Hey, I'm going to Philly on these days. It helps that I'm coming back on Sunday. So booked your trip to Philly. Yay. That's awesome. So yeah, I will. I will call in reinforcements for the Philly trip to make sure I go to Philly trip. Everything else will be up in the air except Atlanta. Awesome. That's killer. I'm glad y'all are coming. Yeah, but they instituted this draft system two years ago and it just, it blew my mind. Like I worked in corporate space for a long time and I've never seen anything like this. It was just crazy and all the managers got like so heavily weighted in preference <clears throat> it was just astronomical like but that's how far they plan out their schedules but then i won't know her schedule like every six weeks she gets a schedule so anyway that's hey day in the life we've been to the dentist we've talked about my wife's job talked about the kids kids playing goose game i don't think i could go back to a large corporation i think i would get fired pretty quickly like, I could go back to work if I had to go back to work. Um, it would be hard to go to a large, faceless, it'd be a faceless, nameless person in a large corporation for me now. That would be tough. Thanksgiving at work today. Yeah, I did. We did used to have that. So since we don't have any real plans to talk about things today, we can talk about when I worked third shift um, at the data center. We would have Thanksgiving, too at like 10 30 at night when we got there we would have thanksgiving dinner at like 10 30 at night would be our deal <laughs> so we'd eat a little bit and then save it and then eat again at like three or four o'clock in the morning so that was fun because we sure as heck weren't coming in for the daytime people's Thanksgiving dinner. For the big daytime um, Thanksgiving, we wouldn't. We're not getting up to come in at you know eleven thirty for the big corporate lunch. We're just gonna do our stuff. I know it doesn't preclude Goose Game now. We were not. We are not playing Goose Game today. We might play Goose Game Thursday. I have too much to do today, work wise, um, to like to do the goose. To get the goose. Thunder Viking, how are you enjoying your new fancy pen? Um, it's a problem. Not in that. It, it's, a, it's a good problem. All I want to do is use it. Which it should, like, to make that type of commitment monetarily to a pen, it better be the pen that I want to use all the time. Um, it's making me rethink like every pen I have stashed away. Like, so I, the 19 pens I put up for sale, I've sold them all but two, I think. Um, and I want to go find more because I'm going to use other pens less because of this pen. That's how much I enjoy it. The 4AM is definitely still in use. Um, I really love the color. Um, you can tell like what I've been using here recently. Like, and this is a lot what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, I love the color. Um, I love the nib. It's an extra fine nib on this one. Um, the 1911 just feels really, really good. So, 
yeah curation is a good phase to be in this this is the first like when i've bought my nikayas before my commitment was to if i'm going to spend the money i'm going to use the pen now my commitment is if i'm going to spend the money other pens have to go um it's a little bit different phase i'm entering into now oh you got your studio neat for the uh for the apollo let me see if i got mine did you just get it today I really want that pen. So like my fountain pens I'm carrying now. I mean, I'll, I'll take them out of here. Oh, I don't care about that. Phone watch AirPods thing. Who cares about that? I just want my pen. I, I haven't, I never listened to that podcast. So uh, I know you can't see that, but I've got Ian's pen, the Pocket 6. I need to spend more time with it. I haven't spent that much time with it yet. But I did put in the Hypnotic Blue Chromatics um, Caran d'Ache ink, which is what I intended all along. So it's I have a bright turquoise ink for this pen. It's just, it's really cool. Like, this is my kind of pen. I love, I love this color style. So the 4AM you saw, the Lamy Studio Aquamarine. I carry the Twisby Eco. I don't care about your presence, Tony. So, um, Twisby Eco. Um, I actually over inked this pen, so I'm trying to use it up. <laughs> it's the uh, the 941 review, and I'm sitting there just, you know, sometimes for ink reviews, I'll only fill it a little bit, and I'm just sitting there going twist, 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 and I was like, oh my god, that's like a whole thing of ink. Yeah, over ink. So like, if I'm just gonna, this is my ink review pen. And I don't, I don't like to put ink back into the bottle. And I know I'm not going to use this that much. So I'm actually probably going to have to use another pen to do ink reviews next. Because I, I want to use this ink. I like this ink. Um, I might just, I might transfer some of this ink with a syringe into like my Sailor cartridge. <laughs> my, my Sailor converter that I am using 941 in. So it's just a matter of I need to use this because I like it. Um... The next ink review I'll do will be the um, Venta Azure, which I have in this Aurora. Put it in a sample vial. That's actually a good idea. That's actually a good idea because I know I'll use it and I can just put it back in like a converter for this 1911. That's probably that's a good that's a smart idea. Um, did y'all see Susan's Venta Pink Sands review on Friday? That. Uh, Oh, oh, oh. That scares me more than uh, throwing this pen. Hey, look at that. Pretty clean, mostly. Um, the one that made crusties on the page. If you if you were ever um, turned off by the idea of what a shimmer ink can do, that one will turn you off completely. Luckily, I've gotten past that point where I've found shimmer inks that actually work that one is like hell no i don't want that anywhere near anything um that was pretty sketchy that was pretty sketchy but this venta this is a sheening azure is kind of sheeny um and it's in my optima flex and this this thing's been good um so i like i like that one a lot um of course the the milky way for sure this uh, Nakaya cigar, like I just, it's just a glorious writer. This one, I, I've ended up ended up using this one more because it has the clip than my standard black and green one. Um, and I like the black and green one because it's got a modified nib on it. Troublemaker Petrichor. I haven't seen that one. I've seen the Troublemaker inks, but I haven't seen that color. And then I'm carrying uh, pink robots. I'm carrying the pink neon brush pen that I reviewed Monday because I love those. Yeah, even supposing that's what I, I'm kind of curious about. So I've had this inked up in my Optima, the Azure, which is a standard Venta for probably three weeks now and been using it. And it looks like it's going to do fine and clean out fine. But I will let you know when I do my review, probably in the next week or two. Hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> thanks star wars lc <laughs> thanks for dropping by i love that it exists too we can talk about pens and paper all day um crusty shimmer inks are what burner pens are for it's not even worth it then i guess the gin house the sharks it's a gray teal that shades to red purple okay yeah those things have been interesting um the pen type b and i did get the new sunderland um disclosure he's advertising on the blog this week he sent me the green one he's added a, a little bit of extra um, machining on the barrel like these round stripes it's still just as good of a pen um it's actually a great machined fountain pen this is one of the most impressive uh impressive pens troublemaker petrichor let's look at this Whew, that's bright oh that's that looks like 123 but better looks more usable to me took your pastel sheba to sign my papers that one's in my um i didn't bring my um uh whatchamacallit Tallulah today but that's the pastel sheba lives in my Tallulah with my sailor riallo uh yy pen club one which i love so the pastel sheba is my most used retro 51 <clears throat> so that's troublemaker there in the middle i'm surprised they don't have a one did they have a one two three sample with it like that coloration looks great to me it looks like a more usable one two three a little bit darker but still with purple gray green who did this did you do this jesse Jesse, how is this? How does Troublemaker Petrichor compare to one, two, three? Am I off base, or are they in the ballpark? Dip pens, I'll see. But like, you can get other good sheening orange inks that don't act like a fool. Petrichor is darker. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I might actually use that to write. I use Sheba far more than pink robots i think it's the trim i like the silver trim the black on the pink robots fits that pen better but it's way more aggressive uh of a look like the pink robots is bar none the best retro 51 i've ever made probably will ever make i use the sheba one more on a day-to-day -day basis the sheba one is the one if i want a retro 51 to carry that's the one i'm carrying i don't know why but the the pink robots usually sits on my um sits on my desk because i want it around all the time because it's such a cool pen you take the crusty orange sparkling as a challenge do you really want that on like i mean why would you put that in a notebook it's gonna like raise the notebook width <laughs> you know it's gonna look silly oh sorry i i hung this on a page sorry we should put that here i really like this i really like this color how that looks yolo I, that's fair i'm not quite yolo on inks i'm close but like that one's a little too much why would you use shimmer inks i've found some that i've been very happy with that blue and silver diamine that i use whichever one I, i've reviewed it in the past it's probably the most one of the most popular ones y'all will know the name of it it's fantastic i think it's great tony sorry <laughs> So I, I sent Tony a pink. I sent Tony a pink case. He was unhappy with me. <laughs> I'm wearing a pink shirt today, Tony. What are you gonna do about it? It's pink, and my my stitching is pink in here, so it matches all the pink, Tony. Sorry, bud. Shimmer inks and pink shirts. So there's your show title for today. Shimmer inks and pink tees. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. That was, I had to do that. I had to do it. Plus, I need. I mean, I needed something to send it in. So yeah. Um, spoke pens coming out soon. Um, Brian has a batch. It's about ready. You just need, you wanted it for the collection. You know you wanted it for the collection. Mike, I would recommend, let me find it, Starlet Night, 
is my one that I like. I've used the Robert Oster Barossa Gilt with success, but it's got gold shimmer. I prefer the silver shimmer. Um, so let's see. Let's see if I can come up with this. And you're not gonna be able to see it on the screen anyway. Starlit C. Starlit C. Let me put this back up. Um, you can't tell, but like if you go to this review, you can see it better on your own. I like silver. Emerald of Shavor is just crazy. It's got so much character, even though it's a gold shimmer. Um, this one has a, yeah, be careful when filling and don't have kids. This one has a silver sheen and a blue ink, which is kind of my, my thing. So, you know, shimmer inks are definitely a, your mileage may vary thing. I mean, I have no shimmer inks inked up right now, Tony. It's like, I don't use them all the time, but when I do use them, I enjoy them. Yeah, that Diamine Orange Inferno is one I need to check out. So I have, what, six, seven, eight fountain pens inked up right now. None have shimmer ink in it. So, you know, it's a it's a as-needed, on an as-needed basis. But I, it turns out when I use them, I find enjoyment from them. And that's what it's all about, right? All this stuff. Diamine Blue Lightning. I need to try some more of these, huh? <clears throat> I was just reading my gift guide notes and I thought it said I thought I wrote down get startled. It's actually get started, getting started. Getting startled would be a different podcast, I think. <clears throat> Stormy Gray, I don't love. So there's your problem. If I don't like it, you won't like it. That's how it works. Is there such a thing? Can you make a waterproof shimmer ink? Is that a something like a manufacturer could make? Like platinum makes those classic inks. How would the shimmer part affect it? Probably not. I don't know. I don't know if there would be any benefit to having that. <laughs> Like enough to where they would sell it over over something. Like I think technically it would work, right? Yeah, I've heard about testing those those shimmer powders and particulates. Shimmer wouldn't be permanent. Yeah. I wonder if they just have to draw the line at like if we're gonna sell this. You know. How they would test it. Probably not a big market for that. Although, I could be wrong. Maybe there would be. Maybe it'd do well. i try. If Platinum Classic, if they came out with a cool color and um, made some shimmer in it, I'd try it. Green shimmer in a gray ink that looked great. Waterproof sh shimmer. Yeah, that's a, I'm saying Platinum would have to be the one to do it, right? I think they have that that cachet of waterproofness and interesting color combinations with said waterproofness i'd try it rnk could do it they've done their pigmented uh was it their pigmented lineup i did not like those i only tried one or two those were pretty bad did you all try the the rnk pigmented ones the little brown box ones i did not like those was it is it called the sketch inks maybe it's because i just used them in a fountain pen and wasn't was not drawing with them or anything i did i was it was just the ugly colors no it was the documents it was the documents one that was it i did not like it yeah documents brown box um the colors just look really washed out does it perform well like i <laughs> seemed like I tried a blue and or a purple uh, and was just like, I can't even review this because it's just kind of gross looking color. Uh, 
All right, we're going to get out. I'm going to do some. Uh, I have to go to the post office and get new new expensive stamps. So I'm going to do some, um, what do they call the added ounce stamps? I, I haven't tried the sketch inks. What's the, what's the theory? What's the story with the sketch inks? Is there a new Retro 51 announcement? I saw something yesterday. What were they teasing yesterday? Something. I don't see it. Oh, it was their Christmas one. Well, I'm going to address the address the envelopes now and then go buy the stamps on the way home. I'll have to try those. Um, you should sign up for the spoke newsletter, but I will let you know probably on Twitter. Um, I'll post it on the blog. Yeah, I'll have it out. We should have plenty to get started. Hopefully hundreds. Um, and hopefully some uh new colors you know just uh, some new mixtures we do have some new anodization um you have found the pin Attic twitch channel um i don't even know if it'll be the spoke pen will be the uh before thanksgiving sketch ink frida okay now you're making me look because i don't know what this is Wow. That's my color, right? That's my kind of color. You want to see this? I remember these coming out and I never tried them. I need to. Do you just use them? They work fine in fountain pens just like anything else and they have permanence. Uh, it's pigment ink, waterproof, light, fast. All right, sold. <clears throat> you can handle that one, Tony. So yeah, I will. Um, I'll get. I'll order a couple of those. So I'm gonna go put them in my cart now, so I don't forget. I need to see what else I need to need to order. but I want to add those to the cart. Is the orange flat or does it have some color to it? I, I, I've taken it off my screen. <laughs> Swing that band hammer. They did good, they did good though if they're gonna come in and, and troll like had some like normal, halfway normal conversation, but you could tell it was weird from the jump, especially with that name. Uh, sure. I can't spell. Oh, that orange is pretty bright. Carmen. All right. Frida. Carmen. That's probably a good start. Was this, I don't like burgundies. Was this brown one when you used? Lily? I don't know if I would use that. All right, I added those to my cart. I need to go look later, see if there's anything else I need. <clears throat> I will say, well, I just clicked over to the, this is not an ad portion of the show, but I will say I got these. Um, I just happened to click over to the new arrivals page on jet pens, the Midori, and they're sold out, so you can't buy them anyway. Midori Chirato Index Clip. They, oh, man, you can't see them at all on this, which is a sign. So they see those little raised clips in there? They're like wafer thin clips, like page clips. And see them in there so I've used them on my theme system in lieu of the bookmarks 
and um, like it's just totally thin. It's really impossible to see. Like, which is kind of making my point, even though you can't see them. So I'm very happy with those little thin clips. Oh wow, you have a bunch of those. Okay, I'll try them. That looks good. I like them. All right, let me uh, make some room here. It's fine. Ooh, the other thing I haven't done, I only remember here is when I uh, is to order ink for my Fafunk stamp, my Kerfunker. Give me a list. I have too many Google accounts. <clears throat> Would that be the whole set then? Tony, I'll just have them all. <laughs> I, I, I. All right. Yeah, me too, Heaven. Actually, I have one old account that I need to get rid of, but there's, I just haven't taken the time to deal with it. All right. Tips for burning through a field notes fast. Started Scarlet Oak yesterday and want to start the new ones when they get in. Um, I mean, the obvious answer is write down everything. But for me, field notes has always been, I've ended up using mine project based. Like when I travel, I can fill up a full field notes, but it's like, well, I don't travel most of the time, <laughs> you know? So, um, uh, you know, I, I just started a new one that I'm copying down lyrics in, you know, write, um, I like, I like to rewrite things, you know, like book quotes, um, you know, song lyrics, um, different things I've, I've read about, like I'll rewrite those types of things. Um, if I'm trying to do like a field notes with a to-do list or something like that, that's just not going to go fast. That's only, you know, only as fast as my lists have, you know, stuff to put down. So yeah, handwriting exercises. That's perfect. Like that's how I would do it. Um, so I write song lyrics a lot, um, and book quotes, so like I'll keep books handy uh, on my desk just so and then I have like an index card with the page numbers of where I've highlighted the the book passages and I'll just rewrite those if I'm looking for like if I can't think of what to write which is a constant problem for me but I want to write or use my pens um I'll just write lyrics and do a drawing per day yeah sketch like I do product design stuff in like a field notes type stuff Yeah, that's kind of like my original Gmail account is like that. It's just set to forward to like the account I actually use. Um, I don't do it old school. I'll usually play it just in the background. I'm usually just copying it from a site like Genius. <laughs> but then I'll play it. I, I will sometimes play like if there's difficult lyrics I'll play if they're act like see is this really what this said you know because some lyrics are hard hard to understand so yes I will I will try to make my own if you will oh man where's Blakemore when you need him first one on the list today So I met someone um, at the last time I was at Dallas Pen Show, so two years ago, that I, I forget the book they were copying, but it was a novel. 
Um, all right, Jesse, good luck. Have a great day. And they were into like at least their second time copying this novel. Um, and was like, wow, like that's commitment. So like they had the big thick notebook and the book they were copying from and just were rewriting the book with different pens, different inks. Um, that was really wild. That takes commitment. And they had already completed it once. So this was like a round two. I'm almost certain it was pretty wild. But anything you can do to write, you know, is, is helpful. I want to say it was like uh, Little Women or something like that, like a like a classic novel. But I could be wrong on that part. <laughs> Troll Nano Rimo by spending the month writing out an existing novel word by word. That's actually not a terrible idea, Evan. And it would be more of a, a handwriting exercise than uh than your actual novel writing exercise, right? But it would be a valid exercise and it would be a great troll. Transcribe AJC articles, that's interesting. Like I've never even thought about that or heard of that. Do we do we need to now Tony's like if I told troll Tony with pink pen cases, he trolls me with barren fig links. Of course that's how it's gonna be. I'm not clicking that link. It might put a virus on my computer. I'm gonna ban Tony from chat. <laughs> But yeah, I like that idea, Evan. I might have to use that next year. Although I couldn't even, not only could I not copy existing 1,500 words a day, I sure as heck couldn't come up with my own. So copying them, that's a lot. Although, Tony, I have seen something. And chat in general, I have seen something that I'm gonna uh, related to the to the link that you will enjoy maybe yeah you will enjoy that hopefully you can get in the in the coming week or two I don't know what the time frame is <clears throat> DM you a pic? Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. It's top secret. I don't need, I probably delete it. I delete all my texts. Yeah, I deleted it. So I couldn't DM it to you if I wanted to. Do y'all um, do y'all actively delete your texts like I do? So you're not um. Oh yeah, for sure. Do y'all actively delete your texts just to save you from texting the wrong people? I do. All right, see you even supposing. Have a good one. Like I have one, two, three, four, five, six active tests, and one, two, three, four of them are fa family. See, I just can't, I just can't live like that. That would drive me insane, Sarah. That would drive me insane. My text, I wish they would auto detonate like after like two or three days. Yeah, I think mine is set to delete after 30 days, but mine are gone like within two, three days. I manually delete. Like I just went through and I probably had like 20 text streams in here and I just went through and got rid of them all except my wife, my in-laws, my daughter, the family group text, Brian from Spokepen and Lisa Van S who just texted me or else she'd be deleted too. So 
<laughs> it, it has gotten me in trouble a time or two, but man, it looks like I am a very much an outlier in this one. I just hate seeing all those texts there and don't want to like, not that I'm like texting things that other people shouldn't see, but it's just like, I'd rather not text other people accidentally. Well, I do have archived emails, but like I haven't like backed them up or saved them off site or like done anything like special to I would get rid of them rid of them if I could. But that would be longer. Like I would want years worth of emails because I do have to look stuff up from time to time that I do want or forget. I'm not so bad about the emails. It's more the texting when I'm not paying attention. How many? How many of these I can get done today? They're going nicely. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? I'm into so I finished two hundred of these in the earlier batches of notebooks. This is another hundred that I've, I'm trying to get done before the end of the year. That would be cool if I could get 300 notebooks out by the end of the year. So there will be notebook, notebook, there will be envelope addressing streams best hot sauce for eggs I mean it's weak sauce and I'll admit that in advance and it's common and it's everywhere but I like crystal for eggs because it's not very it's not overwhelming and I don't use it all the time, but I do like it from time to time. Cheap sauce. But I'm, then again, I'm not a, a hot sauce aficionado either. Yeah, I pretty much salt and pepper eggs. Every now and then I'll get a, a hankering for a hot sauce. Not very often though. Woodbury's Kitchen Snake Oil. See, that I don't get into that realm. Although I did have friends growing up that put ketchup on eggs. That's a whole different different thing. That I was, That's a no-go. It's just wrong. Frank's Red Hot. Ketchup shouldn't go on anything. That's... I don't... Agree but I don't totally disagree either. Like I could live without ketchup in my life. But I do like it on occasion. Ketchup is just want to be marinara sauce. <laughs> is that what Frank's Red Hot commercial does? Ketchup is barbecue sauce that didn't make it. That's fair. That is fair. I am not disagreeing with any of this. Heirloom fish pepper. What is a fish pepper? 
I don't know what a fish pepper is, but it sounds interesting to me. <laughs> Gnarled. It's a street in here named Gnarled. Oh, I just realized I'm not kerthunking my envelopes. I need to I need to get on that. It's a popular pepper. Is it uh is it very spicy like is it is it a particular flavor or a particular heat like or is just a, a classic regional thing which is what it sounds like maybe all right ink still good bama sauce pass is it is, is it white sauce sarah the bama sauce or is it just a secret hot sauce thing because a lot of that a lot of that bottle stuff is that i've seen is a, a white sauce <laughs> i want to bring that to a boil before using it that's funny oh that's cool like i'm getting like i still can't eat very spicy stuff but i am definitely like as you get older your taste buds change and i i do enjoy a good spicy a little bit of spice stuff but i'm i'm pretty much a white guy spice like like i couldn't like at the at the thai restaurant i'd be yeah give me the give me the the wussy wussy level of heat same realm as bar barbecue sauce but more liquid and spicier that's cool i think i i okay that's cool. I like that stuff. <laughs> uh, this is a great street name that I, I just can't tell you. I, I'm, I, I'm concerned about people's OPSEC. But I want to tell you really bad. <laughs> I really want to tell you. Oh my gosh. Uh, I will say it's not in the United States. But I just, I don't want to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being very mean right now. Peppers. Okay, I'll click that link. Hang on one second. Oh my God, chat. Can I tell you this? I can't tell you this. People didn't sign up to have their streets read off online. That's pretty amazing, though. It's making my eyes water, though. What, what ink? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will not click that link, Tony. Very much not. Fish trader pepper lost regional staple found once more. Where's the rating? Hybrid of Serrano and Cayenne. Oh, jalapeno hot, but can top it. That's cool. I would be into that. I just like the name of it. That's a cool name. All right. Is it uh, too soon to get into the coffee after having your teeth cleaned? I mean, that's what teeth cleaning is for, right? To get the coffee stains off your teeth. 
that's pretty much what I go for. <clears throat> Pedro Serrano. Pedro Serrano would have benefited from the Astro services. Oh, yeah, like I was going to wait. Like, I packed this coffee this morning because I knew I couldn't have much this morning. So I packed, like, this thing is completely full knowing that after the dentist, after after I gave it a little bit of time to <laughs> to uh, mature the, the cleaning, uh, make sure it's locked in, uh, we're just going straight into the coffee now. So we'll, fin we'll knock this coffee out later. This Astros thing is getting ugly. Not to turn this into sports ball chat, but... I thought we were going to be in like maybe some fines type of range, but now I think we're in the Luno might get uh, might get suspended kind of range at a minimum. It's gotten gross. So sorry that uh, Pedro Serrano can no hit the curveball, but if he knew it was coming. If he knew it was coming. Uh, Astros, this, it's a whole sign stealing, stealing scandal from, uh, the Houston Astros. It's big. It's, uh, just go online, Houston Astros sign stealing, and you'll see all kinds of videos. Um, it's egregious and terrible. And more and more and more co keeps coming out. And now we're at the point where it looks like Major League Baseball even knew. <clears throat> at the time that something was up and didn't do anything about it. So it's pretty gross. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple, multiple seasons. And it's just, every day. It's some. it's one of those scandals that will just not end. Now, obviously it doesn't rank into the, the overarching scandals that our country is going through right now but like for a baseball fan like me it's a very big it's a very big gross thing yeah so they knew what the pitcher was paying the throw by basically setting up a camera at their home park to real time relay the information of the catcher signal and audibly notify the hitter all within that split second of time So, definitely cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign stealing's fine. No one has I have zero issue stealing signs. I have I have an issue with technology helping you steal signs. That's that's a line being crossed. Stealing signs is different. Stealing signs is not the argument. It's how they were stealing the signs. Everyone steals signs. <laughs> no one's going to be vacating any championships. I can guarantee you that. Okay, here's something. Like, I'm, I'm taking a hard left on this. Not purposely. We can continue to talk about it if we want. I just don't think it's that much to, to talk about on a stationary podcast, even though I brought it up, or a stationary stream. But um, what is – it's it's almost Thanksgiving time, which none of us can believe. What's your go-to specialty Thanksgiving dish – that you only get at Thanksgiving, but you should eat it year round because it's that good. So is there a go-to dish that's either you or your family or someone makes, but you really only eat it at Thanksgiving, but you really want it year round? No Thanksgiving food is that good. I mean, I'm actually not a turkey person. Like turkey's fine. I don't want to eat turkey year round um but my mom makes us a, a cream spinach that's spicy it's just it's the best she like makes an extra one just for me to keep <laughs> after thanksgiving but then that's the only time of year i eat it and it's just cream spinach it's not that hard to make but we only have it at thanksgiving 
stuffing i think stuffing would be like number two on my list that's probably a little more difficult to make even though not extreme but definitely more difficult than cream spinach colombian coconut rice i don't know what that is but i want to know what that is that sounds something like i want i'm gonna need more information on that miss g's crafties you're gonna have to send me a, a dm or a tweet or something because now i'm hungry just because of the words colombian coconut rice bacon flavored gravy damn Tur oh, I see. I missed the first part. Turkey breast wrapped in bacon for the gravy. John Legend's mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is pretty strong. We don't make mac and cheese the rest of the year like we make it on Thanksgiving. That's a fact. Green bean casserole is definitely a not... That's another one like the spinach. Like, you could make the green bean casserole year-round, but you don't. It's very easy. Pecan pie, we used to make year-round because it's Pecan pie is shockingly simple to make, and it's really good. Cranberry sauce in the can. You and my wife would get along really well. I don't do cranberry sauce. I, I, it's fine, though. I just don't want it. Yeah, stuffing. We really ratchet it down for Christmas compared to what we do for Thanksgiving. Is everyone kind of the same... Same thing. Although our Christmas is generally smaller family wise. Like we generally just stay home. Like Thanksgiving, everyone comes over to our house. So there's lots of food. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm pulling this up just so I can save it for later. <clears throat> I would, I almost prefer to have a leftover turkey sandwich than the turkey on the day of. Your Christmas is a big thing food wise. I, I'm talking like food wise. Is that what you mean? Italians for the food on Christmas is bigger. Yeah, I, I get. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Gotcha. I'm with you. Um. So yeah, Christmas is cranberry chutney with orange peel zest. So my wife would like that. Christmas Eve is is moderate compared to Thanksgiving. It's still big, but not that complicated. Uh, turduckins are great. Good for you. I would totally be down for Indian buffet for Christmas meal. My family would not. I like very ethnic food. My family does not like ethnic food. Um, I'll eat food from pretty much anywhere, anytime. I'm very, like, even though I don't like heat, I'm very experimental with food food in general like i'll eat any any food um where my family's pretty they're not that risky like it kind of stops at seafood they do like you know some of the you know the basic japanese chinese stuff but i'll like you know i'll like they would never go to indian or ethiopian or vietnamese or any of that stuff that i like that's but i also live in a small town that doesn't offer that that much so I'm kind of, that's one of the things I don't like about where I live is lack of uniqueness in food for someone who likes food, unique foods. And I'd go eat them by myself. I don't care. <laughs> Except cottage cheese. I don't know where that came into, but I'm, I vote no cottage cheese if we're voting on something. <clears throat> Steamed and marinated chicken feet is a common street food track. I've, I've seen, I've seen that. I've seen that. Christmas full of antipasto, stuffed pasta for dinner, and lots of desserts. So pretty much eat all day. As well, Tony. Like that's it's a, like an all day like thing. Bob Oswald, you came up on the uh, on the list today. You're finally getting a notebook. I'm addressing some envelopes. Who knows what you will find? You know the um, the Butcher Blue never appeared from the first batch of notebooks. No one's ever mentioned it. It's out in the ether. <clears throat> S 
someone at USPS stole the Butcher Blue. You know, I've gotten one or two back and one or two that, you know, like, oh, man, I haven't been stamping these. Damn it. Um, that, you know, I've had to open and, like, I will repurpose them. It hasn't been there. Wherefore art thou, Butcher Blue? You'll take you'll take the 4 a.m. Yeah, that didn't fit in these envelopes. Sorry. Yeah, so Christmas we'll do, we'll just make a big breakfast, but not like a special breakfast. But we'll eat a large breakfast. And then, like, we've gotten out of the habit of, like, cooking. I want to start cooking again for Christmas. When I grew when I grew up, Christmas, we, you know, Thanksgiving was traditional. Then Christmas was steak and shrimp every year growing up. And I haven't done that in years and years, probably since I've been married. Um like I would like to I need to reinstitute that maybe it's still in customs could be it could be lost it could be going to someone who doesn't know what it is not that I care I would just I was interested to see if it re-showed up again somewhere somehow like that someone said oh look what I got that would have been one I would have liked to have seen Chinese food on Christmas. I wish we would do that. High school football plays on Thanksgiving morning. We don't do that. That's a weird one. Just a traditional thing. I could see that. I imagine it's very popular. And everyone, everyone does the thing, right? Oof, leftover ham for eggs benedict on new deers yeah like here like high school football we're already into the playoffs and like maybe thanksgiving weekend they go to like the the dome in atlanta at the mercedes-benz and have like the finals but i don't think they've ever played on uh any no thanksgiving day stuff that's cool i i could see like a community wide like that would be a pretty popular thing right <clears throat> we remembered the funk yeah thanksgiving local rivalry gang yeah no one wants to travel f too far for uh high school on a holiday so local rival games I, that makes total sense like i would be into that like if i lived there oh outside the normal schedule now that's different gotcha Yeah, this year I've watched a combined probably like 10 minutes of NFL football, but it'll be on all day at our house just because like I need some kind of distraction and like people can talk about something. We'll have some kind of sports ball on. Does the Premier League play on Thanksgiving Day? <laughs> That'd be nice, <laughs> even though it's not their holiday. <laughs> can you play on on Thursday so I can watch that instead of the NFL? But I don't. I don't. It, it will be on, like from lunch, after lunch until the evening time will be whatever triple header of football is on. Just because there needs some kind of needs to be some kind of distraction. I need it. I'm very much. Um, what are the kids doing? Okay, I'll go do that on uh, big family gatherings. Wherever the kids are is where you can find me.
You know what? I should do some. Uh, I should do some big adult coloring setups for them and me. Really, for me. Get some cool stuff we can color in the afternoon. But as long as the weather's weather's good, they'll be running around outside. Rich sticks. Thanks for that Twitch Prime resub. Nine months, man. We're uh we're gonna get those sub emotes working here pretty soon. I guess I'm still probably a month out. I've been watching uh I've been watching Khan make the emotes at night for all his uh, clients. It's pretty fun to watch him work. So when I see the subs, that reminds me. I think I'm going with the um, I think I'm going with the pin hype train. <clears throat> Has anyone done a turkey Thanksgiving theme special edition pen? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. You would think at some point there was a turkey retro. I mean, there was a retro everything, right? Jackie, did they have some announcement here recently on the Twitter bot? Doesn't look like it. But whatever colors they teased, it's on Instagram. What is it? Was it a Christmas one? Oh, noon. Okay, noon our time. Because they're an hour behind. Yeah, but wasn't it, wasn't it like red, green, white, brown, gold kind of thing? Corinne, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate you. I really appreciate the uh, the Twitch Prime stuff. It, it's, it super helps. Not yet. You thinking it'll be Christmas just by looking at the pixels? Yeah, totally. It's got to be, right? I should sell my old Christmas ones, but they gave them to me as a gift. Like, I feel bad. Like, they always send me the Christmas one. But, like, I'm not going to use them, and I know people collect those. Like, I should sell them. Maybe I'll just give them to somebody. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Lots more pins for sale coming because we're, we're, we're in the consolidation phase. good giveaway material yeah totally actually you know what I have so many planners I need to give away but I should probably sneak in a retro Christmas pin right I didn't realize um I lost my train of thought oh the Jibun Techo Retro Christmas print for July. That's pretty funny. The Jibun Techo, how aggressive that notebook is. It is aggressively planned. Holy cow. I, that gives me anxiety just looking at that at that journal planner. It's not a journal. Either. I guess they call it a diary, but it is aggressive. Like, I bet it's very useful for some people. And then that's the entire market because if you're not committing to what they have for you in that notebook, right, diary, international for planner, totally. If you're not committing to that, what is in that thing? Like, not much there. All right, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Not yet, but I didn't eat today. And I, I know you've, I've made this mistake a million times, but I didn't want to eat before the dentist. Um, so I'm going to have to go eat pretty soon. So we'll do a few more, a few more envelopes before I hit the road, but we're going to get some grub today. What did you bring? What did you bring for lunch, Tony? Get some grits. They, no, you can't just go get grits and they'd be good. Like, they'd be fine. Mashed potatoes, I could go for that. I wish if Popeye's was convenient, I would never eat anywhere else probably. It is just not convenient. It is like 20 minutes out of the way. <laughs> 
So that said, it's probably going to be Zaxby's. Zaxby's is convenient and good. Because I got to go by the post office and it's by the post office. Yeah, it be it would be worth going out of the way. Just not today. I have yet to have it too. I've yet to have the sandwich. Michael De Leon, you're on the list if you're still here. Get you an old croissant going. Feels very, uh, feels very right notepadsy. That feels like a thick one. <laughs> That's the thing about my food eating habits. None of it. None of it uh, works well with my insides, <laughs> but I still eat it. But you have more serious digestive issues than I do. You're still here. You're getting a notebook. You're on the list. It's been a very stream-centric list today. You're off to nap. Hope you feel better, Evelyn. This morning I only had four coffees, which made me feel yuck. What's what's the correct number of coffees to not feel yuck? I'm behind on my coffee intake, but that's probably good because it's not working with my no food intake right now. Yeah, it totally, f you'll have to let me know if I'm right. I, I have no idea. It felt thicker than the other ones. Who knows? You went home and went back to sleep after dropping the kids off. <laughs> Sounds like something I'd do. I can't nap in the morning. My I am definitely like a mid-afternoon crash type of guy, like two o'clock. I get those. I get the, the mid-afternoon deal. Fatigue's a thing. Yeah. Nothing you can do about it, really, huh? Ooh, I didn't kerthunk that one. How many of these did I not kerthunk? All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. I definitely need some food. We can go longer on Thursday, though, I think. I'll have to see what my schedule's like Thursday. Um, see if we can go a little bit longer, maybe two, three hours on Thursday. But I, I got to look at my schedule. I got to figure that out. I haven't, I haven't not planned ahead this week, chat. But um, we'll still, we'll still do it. We'll still chat. We'll still do the thing. We'll still do the stream. Talk more about pens. We'll really, maybe we'll really hammer the gift guide stuff um, for topics. I'll have some time. I got to work on that this afternoon. So, what else do I have going on? I don't know. A lot but foods first. So y'all stay awesome. I'm going to jump for today. Um, and we'll do this again very soon. And then Thursday we'll have a plan for next week. Cause next week's going to be weird, um, with the holiday, but that could be more streams or less streams. We don't know which yet. So stay tuned till then.